You boys be quiet down there! This time on Neo Geo Generation, we're covering Robo Army. Robo Army. NGH 032. 1991 from SNK. As per usual, we'll be playing this on my MBS cartridge here. Like most older SNK games, the game was produced by Eikichi Kawasaki, associate producer Hiroshi Matsumoto and production designer Koichi Sakita worked on many of the Fatal Fury games. Later, they both moved to Dimps, where they were producers on the Sonic Advance games, among others. So there's a familiar SNK pedigree here. The year is 2099, and world peace has nearly been achieved thanks to a powerful robot army created by Dr. Flan Jeed, which has conquered the world's evil empires. But then one day the doctor and his daughter Frontia were mysteriously kidnapped. A new robot army calling themselves Hell Jeed has invaded and taken over Neo Detroit. They're killing civilians and implanting their brains into their evil robot forces. You take control of either Maxima or Rocky of the 64th Robo Army Force. Their mission is, you guessed it, to defeat the evil Dr. Jeed. In the game, the story plays out in these same cutscene graphics before every stage. There are no voices here, so I'll go ahead and read. Seize humanoids! We will use their... human brains to clone ourselves! You know, as you do. We're able to look at some beta screenshots from the game due to older build versions being used in SNK catalogs. In this catalog from November 1991, we can see a different version of the title screen and a different font used for the cutscenes. The older title screen looks like it kept the graphics of the Robo Army marching in the background rather than having it fade before the title. Also notice here that the logo used in the final game is a bit different too. If your game is titled Robo Army, then it made sense actually to have the actual Robo Army in the background. Wouldn't this have been cooler than the black screen? In this February 1992 catalog, you can see different gauges at the top of the screen, and presumably some debug numbers at the bottom. Let's jump into the game then. Press A to punch, B to jump, and press C to use your special powers. These are basically bombs that you can keep in reserve to defeat enemies more easily. You get a stock of 6 each time you continue, and you can collect cyber balls to replenish your stock. But as your stock depletes, the power level decreases. There are 3 levels. The first two red cyber balls used are full power, so they unleash mass destruction that covers the whole screen. The middle two orange balls simply fire a projectile straight in front of your character. And the final two green ones only create a little spark directly in front of your character. It's a good idea to save these mostly for the bosses. The D button isn't used in this game. After you use all your cyber balls, your character can perform a kick by pressing the C button. This C button kick is powerful, but otherwise there's not much point to this since you can only do it when you're out of cyber balls. Why don't they just make use of all four buttons so that you can kick at any time? That D button is still shiny and new! You can jump kick in this game by pressing B and C, but the jump is delayed, and so fast that it's not very useful most of the time. And there's one move that the in-game how to play instructions won't give you, but the manual will. The most important move of all. Pressing A and B together will allow you to do a back kick. Mastering this move is the key to this game. This kick does twice the damage of your normal punches. It makes many enemies go down in one hit instead of two, and bosses die faster. For some reason, it's really fun to walk around pressing the direction away from your enemies and pressing both buttons together. You would think it would be a hassle, but if anything, it improves the game by adding some extra challenge. The trick is to back kick enemies when they're just in range. As enemies approach, you have a very small window to kick them before they will instead be able to hit you. There isn't a lot of difference between Maxima and Rocky, except that Maxima karate chops with his elbow, while Rocky hugs enemies to death. 
Their special powers also look different. They also both have Michael Beard for their voice, so there's that. And then there's what should be the coolest feature of all. Your character can transform into a car. Causing me and my car to become one. The game calls it a buggy, but I just refer to it as the car. You can turn into the car by collecting the power metal. Power metal! Power metal! Everyone should play Robo Army at least once for the pure satisfaction of becoming an unstoppable killing machine. Your character suddenly goes from slowly dawdling about to tearing around the screen plowing into enemies, killing them instantly. It's a very fun idea that makes Robo Army stand out from other brawlers. However, some of the fun subsides when you realize this is basically just this game's version of momentary invincibility. While you're the car, you have a limited time where you're invulnerable, and merely touching the enemies kills them. The whole thing feels like a missed opportunity, because what if instead of making the car momentary invincibility, you can take damage while you're the car? Pressing the A button will allow you to plow into enemies, but what if they had made that your only form of attack, rather than killing enemies simply by touching them? Then the momentary thrill of your character turning into a large vehicle filling the screen would be less pointless, requiring more skill than simply moving as quickly as possible. This would be more rewarding in the long run. The ability to turn into a car is one of the aspects of this game that made it bigger, badder, better. My first exposure to Robo Army was in magazine articles, like this one from the January-February 1993 issue of Game Informer magazine. This game certainly did hold up in screenshots. The idea of big robots slugging it out, the clang of metal on metal, it made Robo Army one of the games that contributed to the bigger, badder image of the Neo Geo at the time. The graphics and theming alone may have been enough to make the cooperative arcade gameplay worth shelling out for on the premium console at the time, but in hindsight, the gameplay perhaps wears a bit thin. Current opinions of this game seem to be a healthy range of good to bad, but the general consensus would probably be that Robo Army is mediocre. Let's now take a closer look. The game begins by dropping you in a forest. SNK seems to have a thing about making it just about impossible to jump kick characters riding motorcycles. In this case, you should either ignore them or hit them from behind after they pass. All stages are broken up by a mid-boss with this same BGM. This big mechanized dog isn't tough, but in general, you'll probably want to use up one or two of your cyber balls on mid-bosses to avoid taking damage. It was really generous of this monkey robot to take some time off from Strider to be the stage one boss here. You'll almost be 100% safe if you stand in this spot, just slightly above the Area 1 monkey boss, and all the way to the right while facing left. This trick can be more difficult to do in two-player mode, because in this game the characters can't simply walk past each other. The two players aren't able to occupy the same space, they end up pushing each other around by accident. Getting pushed out of the way can be annoying while trying to fight enemies, so teamwork will be crucial to playing well in two-player mode. Also, having two players on screen can add a very minor amount of slowdown in Robo Army, particularly during boss explosions. But the amount of slowdown is very small, especially compared to some later Neo Geo games. It's definitely not enough to detract from the experience. They provoked the wrath of Jeed! My army destroy forces against us! The Wrath of Jeed? Sounds like we may have found the worst Star Trek sequel ever. You don't want to be standing in the way of these flame-throwing bots in Area 2. Like with the motorcycles, wait for them to pass before attacking. Two quick kicks before they get away. Otherwise wait, and you don't have to kill them. 
Ah, everyone's favorite part of these games, landmines all over the ground. You'll want to walk between these, but the enemies are pretty good at knocking you into them. Besides punches, the standard robot enemy, found throughout the game in multiple colors, have two basic attacks you need to look out for. They will try to charge at you, and they have a Brocken-style leg extension kick that's really annoying. The Area 2 mid-boss also introduces you to the hopping version of these things, and their attack where they try to charge at the player can be troublesome. You can often get away with the same strategy for the Area 2 boss as we used for the Area 1 boss. It's probably your safest bet. Your persistence is in vain! You persistent guy. I will send you to... To hell? To hell? Yes! Oh yeah, it's deep town, baby! Here at the beginning of Area 3, we get our one little interlude between the standard action in this game. These ropes for our heroes to descend. You're able to jump between the two ropes, and you can still use your AB move, but here it's a back punch rather than a kick. Kill these things as quickly as possible, and use a cyber ball when the screen gets too full. We'll see this rope descending playstyle one more time briefly at the beginning of the final area of the game. I'm very bad at avoiding damage from these scuba bots, but they do go away on their own if you don't kill them. Our old strategy of sticking to this spot doesn't work as well for the Area 3 boss. This big Mauser makes some funny sounds and takes breaks to snack on robot scraps. Unlike the previous boss, which made a snack out of you. I underestimated their true power! My men? I count on you to, um, get them! In the next episode, Mad Police Mad. Hey, what's Neo Jesus doing here? Here's a nice little touch. Attack this post, and debris from the ceiling will fall, destroying enemies. They will not stop Jeeds! Cyber City Plan! I'm so happy with my evil plan. Jeed's Cyber City Plan, a registered trademark of Jeed Enterprises. Since there's no apostrophe on the S, I can only assume it's not the Devil's Factory, but rather a factory where they make devils. Well, that can't be good. Unless you're talking about a Devil's Food Factory, which is a lesser known competitor to the Cheesecake Factory. You'll have to fight a weak ass version of yourself as an Area 5 mid boss. If he only knew the AB kick attack, he might stand a chance. Area 6, Jeed Tower, is the final area, and it's mostly a boss rush, not unlike the last stage of Mutation Nation. Except this boss rush stage doesn't have the interesting varying backgrounds of the Mutation Nation one. This highlights a shortcoming of Robo Army, the lack of variety and general blandness of the stages. Also, the robot theme has a lot of potential for interesting character designs, but it's potential that goes largely unmet, fighting the same or similar enemies for most of the affair. And these boss battles, well, they're just alright. They're a little better than Transformers knockoffs, at least. Our old strategy of camping out at the side of the screen won't work as well here in the final area as before. In general, all of the bosses are a bit harder this time around than they were the first time. Here you'll fight the mechanical dog from the middle of Area 1 with the cop from the end of Area 4. Oh, I didn't know you two go together. Cute. evil plan! The Cyber City one! Now I have no choice but to destroy you! So it turns out our heroes were just two regular dudes wearing suits, and now they can have a drink and laugh about all this apparently. Although countless people lost their lives, and this lady lost her crazy dad. Yasumasa Yamada, credited as Yamapi, and Kazuhiro Nishida, credited as Koni, did the music and sound here. These two are SNK veterans. 
Yamada did the music for several games we've already looked at, including Riding Hero, Burning Fight, and 2020 Super Baseball. Nishida doesn't usually get first billing, but he helped with King of the Monsters and Alpha Mission 2. Robo Army's soundtrack is similar in feel to Burning Fight and Mutation Nation. Yamada of course did the music for Burning Fight, so that explains the similarity, but whether the Robo Army and Mutation Nation soundtracks influenced each other is unknown, since the two don't share any of the same credits for the music. The stage clear jingles do feel similar. The Area 4 music in particular would feel right at home in Riding Hero, which probably isn't a compliment. Robo Army certainly doesn't have a memorable soundtrack. It's kind of the usual generic rock background music as in many of SNK's early Neo Geo games. The first stage music has an intro lasting for 15 seconds, featuring a couple of digitized loops of indistinct voices on a radio. It even plays again after the mid-boss, so it's kind of obnoxious, but actually, you could probably say it was impressive in 1991. I like the pop of the snare drum sample they went with for this game. I've spent a lot of time with most of the Neo Geo library, and have come to even appreciate stuff like this from the mediocre Burning Fight soundtrack. Perhaps it just comes down to familiarity more than anything else. Yeah, he's right everyone. Every game has good soundtrack if you just give it a chance. No, not every soundtrack. The Neo Geo CD release of Robo Army loads up in 48 seconds on a single speed system, and 27 seconds on a CDZ. This version also has a very quick loading screen before each stage. What exactly is being loaded between stages? Well, a glance at the files on the disc tells us that it's all sound samples, which is no surprise since the memory reserved for ADPCM sound samples is where the Neo Geo CD has its largest deficit, and it's where corners most often need to be cut in later releases. Make no mistake though, at 1 megabyte, the Neo Geo CD still has a gargantuan amount of memory allocated for sound samples compared with other consoles at the time. It's just that so much of the sounds in Neo Geo games were typically made up of recorded samples that the one megabyte fills up fast. It's surprising though that this game apparently uses enough voice and sound samples to necessitate the extra load screen between stages. Maybe the game could have been better optimized, but they felt that this quick load screen wouldn't detract much from the experience. Anyway, as usual for a game of its age, the CD version of Robo Army doesn't have a rearranged soundtrack. It's just the cartridge version recorded on CD audio tracks, with a noticeable bit of reverb added in the mixing process. The loading screen before each stage is fast enough that it doesn't really hurt the experience. However, this game suffers a lot from the delay caused by accessing music tracks mid-game. The pause before bosses and after mid-bosses is very noticeable. The CDZ has a faster lens, so these access times are slightly faster and more bearable on the CDZ. But the cartridge version is, without a doubt, the preferred way to play. 
RoboArmy may not have gotten any sequels or ports to other systems, but the game does have a lasting legacy with SNK nonetheless. The KOF character Maxima was supposedly inspired by the character of the same name in RoboArmy. The Another Striker for Maxima in KOF 2000 was Rocky from RoboArmy. Rocky was also featured in the backgrounds of four different KOF games and Neo Geo Battle Coliseum. So that was Robo Army. Among the other brawlers we've looked at in this series, Ninja Combat, Burning Fight, Sengoku, and Mutation Nation, it holds its own. Although, if I had to rank them, it falls somewhere closer to the bottom of the pile. This style of game will fall by the wayside as we progress through the Neo Geo's library. We'll be looking at Sengoku 2 in an upcoming episode. After that, there's only Sengoku 3, which was released much, much later. At any rate, Robo Army is still very much worth a go. The theming is cool, playing as the car provides a cheap thrill, and it still has plenty of that early SNK charm. As a casual two-player experience, you really can't go wrong with pulling out Robo Army. Well folks, the time has finally come. In the next episode we'll be covering NGH number 033, Fatal Fury. Not to oversell it, but it represents the start of a new era for this video series. I hope you'll join me for this special episode. In the meantime, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. This is Neo Alec signing off.